Okay, so I wanted to talk about Google Docs and the purpose of using Google Docs for classes. So Google Docs is nice because many people have access to it as long as they have an email and they can sign in, they can use Google Docs. It's really easy. Just tell your students that they need an email before signing up for class instruction. And you also have the option of using Word. You also have the option of using Word and Word is nice. So let's see. Here is Word. One thing about Word is you can also edit and accept suggestions and reject. So that is another option. So when it comes time to using Google Docs, many children have easy access to that. Not everyone has Word. So it's not um, universal for every student. All right, so I teach my students to um, use Google Classroom along with Google Docs. So you hear the word Google, Google Classroom, Google Docs, it's easy collaboration. So whenever they submit their assignment in Google Classroom, I am able to grade it. So for example, yeah, once they post an assignment, I can see that it's turned in. I can also click on each, um, each one of these attachments and see if they even have started on it. And I can also click on it and work with them on it um, whenever we meet, which is also nice. So I post instructions on each class and then the students turn it in and submit it. Sometimes I do post well-written assignments in the classroom stream just for everyone to take a look at. So back to Google Docs, when someone submits something, um, automatically in Google Classroom, it has suggestions on. So automatically this is already on and I just go through it and I make suggestions. For instance, if this was spelled wrong, I would cross it out and then put the correct spelling. All right, it says replace. It will automatically replace that when they click the check mark. I can also add a comment and hit reply, okay? So when the student gets to their assignment, they can easily just click the check mark and it auto corrects, which is very nice. When it comes time to Using Google Docs, students must understand how to use the toolbar. And when it comes to outlining, students can add special characters. So they go to insert special characters and they can click any of these. Okay, you can also search. You can also draw symbols. And when you click it, it posts just like that. Nice and easy. All right, so if a student does not have um, Google Classroom or is not able to access that, I can also just have them share a link. And you go to share, of course this has to have a title, and change to anyone with the link. This is extremely important. The student must change it to editor so that I can edit their assignment and then copy the link, okay? If I just wanted to view it and then they would send it as view, viewer or commenter, but they must um, share it with me as an editor. So something that has been brought up is should teachers 
edit grammar mistakes. I feel like that is very important. So I'm going to go to this assignment. And this is just an example of a student that I tutor. Okay, so this is a new story that they have started. Um, kind of violent, but hey, at least they have something to create. So first thing is there needs to be an indentation here. So format indent first line. All right. There is also supposed to be a comma here. And now the story is changing to a new place and time. So we want to indent here, okay? New place, new speaker, new time is when you indent. Of course, if children um, have not learned indentation, it may not be something that they know. So that's why as a teacher, I will go through this and correct and show them that is all a part of the editing process. With writing, you must edit the work. Now, many parents may not remember all of the grammar editing rules, but as a teacher, I should stay up to date with this stuff and understand when um, certain grammar rules need to be applied and then help the student from that point. Okay, I can even leave a new note here indent from new place or time, right? And down here, I started adding grammar rules to help this student. This can also be something that you can send to your students and they can view this to help them understand the writing process and editing. All right, again here, then my friend Jerry yelled, a new speaker, comma right here. And then indent after the speaker speaks. I noticed there's two speakers here. All right, there we go. There may be other mistakes in here. I usually go back and read it again just to check because you always don't get the mistakes right away. Okay, so back to Google Classroom. You can add topics. These topics help the student to be able to easily view certain topics. For instance, vocabulary, maybe um, editing checklists can go here as well. That is extremely important. There is a tab here for grades. You can see everyone's grade. Done late, done late. And there also is a class average. You can easily add students here in Google Classroom, invite students by email, usually. Whenever you type their name or email, it pops up and you just click it and invite them. So uh, as a teacher, I post a lesson title, I include instructions, and I can add something from my Google Drive or a simple link or a file or even YouTube. And I always have to make sure each student can get a copy. That way, anything that I edit multiplies so that each student will get that copy. I also, don't need everyone to have a copy of this whiteboard image. They can just view it. So that's why it's left at view. Each copy will be attached when they, when they turn in their assignment, meaning they must do and they must look at each one of these that are posted. 
And I also have a rubric. The cool thing about rubrics is you can reuse them for every class. You don't have to keep recreating it. And I use the IEW checklist to help make the rubric. And this way, I can give the students their grade and it automatically gives them a grade. I don't have to calculate anything. So when a student turns it in, I will put the amount of points that they received. Did they include all of their dress ups? If not, if they didn't do one, the points will show and it will adjust their grade, which is a very nice feature. You can also create documents. So you can create a doc or a slide or sheets, drawing or forms. And once you create it, you can edit and add it here immediately, which is also nice. And everything will be saved in your drive that you create. That way you don't have to recreate it. Students can leave comments in Google Classroom and I'm always notified of those comments. They come straight to my email and I can respond back. So if a student has a particular question about something, they add a comment that sends it privately, which is very helpful. Say for instance, I want to add a um, YouTube video about the lesson. I can do that as well. 